want to turn any computer into a hacking and forensics machine in just minutes? In this video, I'll show you exactly how to install Parrot OS onto a USB stick, complete with persistence and even encrypted persistence if you want maximum stealth and security. You'll learn how to create a fully portable, persistent Parrot OS setup that keeps your files, tools, and configurations even after a reboot. Perfect for cybersecurity, pen testing, and forensic work on the go. But look, I get it. Not everyone wants to go through all of these steps. If you'd rather skip these steps and just plug and play, I've got you covered. I created the Parrot OS Security Live USB. This is a handcrafted, boot-ready, fully configured Parrot OS USB stick with encrypted persistence, already set up, ready to go out of the box, whether you're a beginner or a pro. Stick around if you want to learn the full install process step by step or check out the link below to the Fresh Forensic store where you can get your own ready to go live USB. Either way, you walk away with a powerful Parrot OS setup in your pocket. Let's get into it. Welcome to Fresh Forensics your go-to destination for everything Linux. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Okay, so I have shown you how you can add persistence to your Parrot OS live USB drive. Now in this section, we're gonna go a little bit further and we're gonna add encrypted persistence to our Parrot OS live USB drive. So I have plugged my USB stick into the system and I'm gonna run lsblk. I want to identify the name that the USB stick has been assigned by my system. It's very important that you do this and that you find the correct name. So I can see over here on the left that it has been assigned to SDA, or in other words, forward slash dev forward slash SDA. The system does not auto mount anything that you plugged in. So you will not see anything over here on the right hand side under mount points because it's not mounting the file system. You can see that we have two partitions, SDA1 and SDA2. So what we are about to do right now is create a third partition above the first two and that third partition is going to be our encrypted persistence and we're going to use Lux to do this. I want to point out, as I am a big fan of using the fish shell, um, in this example I am not using fish and that is because fish interprets some of these operators differently. I don't want to have to modify the commands in order to get them to run correctly. So I'm using the default terminal emulator that comes with Kali Linux. I would avoid using the fish shell for any of these commands. First thing that we're going to do is run sudo fdisk on that location, which I have identified as forward slash dev forward slash sda. Yours may be different. It may be sdb or even sdc, followed by three left angle redirectors. These are called left angles or tri left triangles, a dollar sign and inside of single parentheses print F and then inside of double quotation marks P backslash NN backslash NP backslash N backslash N backslash N backslash NP backslash NW. All of these commands will be in the description. So all you need to do is copy and paste them. And if necessary, change the SDA to whatever location applies to you and your situation. Let's hit enter. And now we can see that we have a third partition that is showing up. And that is at forward slash dev forward slash SDA three. 
The next step is going to be to encrypt this partition, and we are going to do that using Lux. So we're going to run the command sudo crypt setup with dash dash verbose dash dash verify dash passphrase and provide it with the location for me that is forward slash dev forward slash sda3 once again it might be different for you it might be sdb3 or sdc3 but it should definitely have a three at the end i almost forgot a portion of this command and that is going to be lux format that's with a capital f that is why i'm making this easy for you guys and i'm including all the commands in the description so you will not make that same mistake now we can hit enter uh, this is going to overwrite all the data on this partition we have to do yes in all capital letters and now we have to enter a passphrase we need to create that passphrase right now you want to make your passphrase strong and unique and you want to make sure you remember this because this is how you are going to access the encrypted partition on this usb drive you have to enter it again now we're going to open the encrypted partition that we just created by running the command sudo crypt setup followed by lux open and that point in the file system which is dev s d a 3 and finally the mount point which is going to be called my underscore usb we have to enter the passphrase that we just created so now that the encrypted partition is open we're going to create a file system inside of it and give it a label. We're going to run the command sudo mkfs.ext4. And that is because we are creating an ext4 file system. I'll do a dash capital L for label, and we're going to give this the label of persistence. And the location should be forward slash dev forward slash mapper forward slash my underscore usb once this command has completed we can move on to the next step and that is going to be to mount the partition and create the persistence.conf file which is a configuration file and that will allow the changes to persist across reboots we do this by running sudo make directory we're going to do dash p v and i'm going to create a directory inside of forward slash mount that directory is going to be called my underscore usb next we will mount the partition by running sudo mount with dash v and i'm going to run that on forward slash dev forward slash mapper forward slash my underscore usb and we are mounting forward slash mount forward slash my underscore usb now we're going to create the persistence.conf configuration file by running the command echo inside of double quotation marks we're going to do a forward slash followed by space and the word union go outside of the double quotation marks and we are going to pipe that command into another command which is going to be sudo t forward slash mount forward slash my underscore usb forward slash persistence dot com you should get this line as your return and finally we're going to unmount the mounted file system by running the command sudo u mount dash v forward slash mount forward slash my underscore usb the last thing that we need to do is close the encrypted partition by running sudo crypt setup lux close with a capital c and we're closing forward slash dev mapper 
forward slash my underscore USB. If everything has been done correctly, we should now be able to plug in our USB and boot into the live USB encrypted persistence mode. So on my desktop, I'm going to right click over top of the USB drive and I'm going to click safely remove volume. Remove my USB stick from the system. Let's go ahead and see if we can boot into the live USB and enable the encrypted persistence mode. All right, so we have finished creating our encrypted partition. And now for the moment of truth, I'm gonna plug the Parrot OS live USB stick into the side of my laptop. Any one of the USB ports should work just fine. I now have to press a key combo in order to bypass the starting of the operating system that runs natively on this laptop. This key combo is very common. However, you have to double check the key combo for the machine that you are using if you are in fact using a laptop. Uh, for me, it's very simple. I press the power button and then proceed to tap the F9 key. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. We're gonna power it on and I just tap the F9 key a couple times. Realistically, once or twice should work just fine. You hear the beeping noise. We are brought to the Parrot Security Live Boot menu. We're gonna go down to Advanced Options and then Encrypted Persistence and hit Enter. Now you can see we have our splash screen and at the bottom it is asking us for the password. We need to enter the password that we created previously to decrypt the encrypted partition. Now for most, it probably is as simple as entering that password and waiting for that process to take effect. For a select few individuals, such as myself, it may be just a little bit more work for you to get this to work. And the reason why is because if you are already utilizing encryption for the operating system that is running natively on the laptop, just like I am, then what is going to happen is when I enter the password, it's going to think that I'm trying to decrypt the hard drive on my laptop. So the easy way for me to get around this is I'm going to hit the escape key that that is going to allow me to see what is actually happening and more importantly, which drive is being decrypted. So I can see from the writing on this screen, which may be hard for you to make out, it is trying to decrypt my hard drive. And I know that because I know the, the naming convention used on my laptop. So how do we get around this? It's pretty straightforward actually. What I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna enter a bogus password. I'm just gonna literally fat finger the keyboard. And then I'm gonna hit enter. It's gonna make an attempt and it's obviously gonna fail. And if you're able to read that writing, what it says is that there was an error decrypting and it asks you to retry. I'm gonna do N for no, I do not want to retry. By doing that, it's gonna then move on to the part that I do need to decrypt, which is on this USB stick. So I'll do an N for no. Now, if you can see that right there, it is now bringing us to the partition that we do want to decrypt. You can actually see that it says, please unlock disk at forward slash dev forward slash SDA3. If you remember from previously in this video, SDA3 was the encrypted partition that we created. So I'll go ahead and enter the correct password to decrypt. And now, as you can see, we are not getting any errors. Though in times past, I have still seen it throw the same error and successfully decrypt. So there seems to be maybe some bugs that need to be worked out in this area. There we go. So we have our kernel messages hitting the screen just like you would see with the normal boot up of a Linux operating system. 
and there we go. Well, it took a minute or so for that process to complete, but what we now have is the default desktop for Paired OS. I'll go ahead and brighten this up a little bit. Come down here to this, this little icon at the bottom that has a Z on it. We're going to hit that to uh, stop it from going to sleep on us. And there you go. From this point, you are only limited by your imagination. If we click on applications in the upper left and hover over pen testing, it will open up the menu and we have all of our various tools um, organized for us. So we have all of the tools that come with Parrot OS security now at our disposal. Uh, something that we may be taking a look at in another video is the ability to create what is commonly referred to as a nuke password. It's a little bit more complicated, but it is a wonderful feature to have. And this will allow us to insert an alternate password into that prompt so that if you are ever in a compromising situation and somebody is attempting to force you to decrypt your drive, you have the option of entering your quote unquote nuke password and it will render those key slots useless. It will render all of the data on that encrypted partition useless and make it inaccessible. So we will perhaps take a look at that in a separate video. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more Linux, cybersecurity, and hacking content. And as always, keep learning and stay fresh. I'll see you in the next video. Fresh Forensics is a way of life. You heard me? Check out the GitHub repo, baby. GitHub.com slash Douglas Fresh Habian. Fresh Forensics, baby.